In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to create your own patch from scratch. Let's go up here. Actually, we're going to select the instrument and I'm going to go up here to start here. That's just a basic patch. So we're going to select that and then we're going to scroll all the way to the top. Select a user location to write that to. And then I'm going to press save to confirm. And now we're in user three. Let's start playback on that and see what it sounds like. All right, so it's just defaulted here. It's playing kick drum from the DR55. So the first thing to do when creating a patch is to have an idea in mind what it is that you want to create. And for this example, what I'd like to do is create a open closed hi-hat, uh, let's say for the 808 drum machine. But then I'd like to be able to morph that and mix it into, let's say, an open closed hi-hat from the 909. Then maybe add some extra little stuff to make it more interesting. So let's see how we would do that. All right, so we've got our voice one here. Let's go ahead and find our 808 hi-hats. I'm gonna find a closed hat here. I'm gonna select that. Now I wanna modulate that sample selection with CV2. We're sending a logic signal uh, coming from the accent of an orb sequencer. So when we get an accent signal, we want that hi-hat to be open, otherwise it'll be closed. And now we need to set a modulation amount. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the attenuator for our CV2, just so we can see what the entire range is. And so now I increase this modulation amount, we should hear that closed hat selecting a open hat. Oops, gotta select it first. Okay, so these are different hi-hat samples that are in the, uh, like I believe that's more of a ride or a cymbal. I'm going to leave it there just because I'm going to show you something else here. Let's look at our modulations. Okay, so we have no modulation on voice one, no modulation on voice two. Now let's go look at our mix. So voice one, we're mixed all the way over to voice one. And we've got CV1 is set up as a modulation source, but there is no modulation amount. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign knob one. Oops. I'm going to assign knob one to control our mix amount between the two different voices. So right here now, and I go here. So I've got an open close kind of thing happening. And now I've mixed over to voice two. Um, and we can hear it's just a stationary kick drum. So let's go ahead and look at voice two, and let's go find a 909 closed hi-hat here. So here we've got a closed hat short. Now let's go ahead and set up CV2 to select our open hat. And see, we're, we're actually jumping too far with this range. If we go back here, see we've already selected, we're getting into the like the ride symbol there. Oops, let me go back here. We're getting into the ride symbol, which is all the way up here. That's several steps away. We really want to go from there to about there. So what we can do is, since this is a logic signal we're sending in here, I'm going to go ahead and select our short little snip sample there. Let's go ahead and, and tune the attenuation so it selects the right sample for us. So we're getting some medium open hats. Right there's what I like. Now let's go ahead and check the 808. All right, so it sounds like it's doing its closed and open thing, and so is the 909. And as we mix between the two, Okay, so we have achieved our results we are looking for. Now let's look at ways we can make this more interesting here. Instead of using this knob alone to adjust the mix, let's go to the mix section, look at our modulation source. So we've got K1 assigned to the mix. Let's see what else we could do here. Let's try, if we take this CV1, because we're not using that, and add it to this value, let's see what happens here. So we've got CV 
from one, attenuate it all the way down. So right now it's having no effect. And our knob still works like it did before. Now let's leave it all the way down and we'll increase this attenuator. Okay, so now that external CV is controlling our mix, but our knob one can still be used to offset that pattern. Now, if you listen close there, and then I mix it all the way back here, what you're really getting is the opposite result to where instead of going from 909 to 808, it's going 808 to 909 with the same CV pattern. So that's pretty interesting. We've got that. But we haven't done anything with knob too, so let's make our patch a little bit more interesting. And right now our filter is set to all pass, so it's not doing anything. Let's go ahead and set it to low pass. And let's turn our cutoff frequency down here. Let's see what it's at. Okay, so that's pretty low. I would like this control voltage pattern to be able to modify uh, the filter cutoff frequency. That, so that's CV1, but I'd like to also do something similar and allow that knob 2 to offset the CV pattern. So we're going to go CV1 plus knob 2. Let's go ahead and set the bottom of a range for the filter. Like that. Let's bring that up. And I'm going to adjust that modulation amount down just a little bit. So let's turn that down. Now let's turn up our CV1. And we can hear it moving the filter plus mixing between voices 1 and 2. And now we can use this to offset. Let's adjust this modulation amount here. So, so both the CV and the knob have more effect. Or we can break this down and just listen to our closed hats. So there's our 808, there's our 909. And as we increase this voltage to select a different sample for the open, we get different variations of that open closed type hi-hat sound. So in that way, we've got a very interactive patch here. We could turn this down and get just closed hats. We could mix in and get a different open hat for each the 808 and the 909. Here we could adjust the attenuator to mix or to adjust the mix between the two voices plus control the filter cutoff. Or we could manually adjust this. And when we adjust it all the way up, we're not going to hear this really affecting anything because the filter cutoff frequency is pushed up so far. So at that point, we'll just hear the mixing between the two. That's a great way to make a very interactive patch that would be very difficult to do on a traditional drum machine.